Hey harmonizers, welcome to this video with Valente where we are going to do some confidence building while I'm in the saddle. So for the first time we're going to try to solve some issues in the saddle of me getting closer to the curtain that he's a little bit nervous of without doing it on the ground first. So it's a totally different thing when you have a horse uh, on the ground and then when you get in the saddle you still have to build up that confidence and show them that you can be an effective leader in the saddle as well so this is going to be pretty exciting to start some confidence building in the saddle with Mr. Valente. In the beginning you can see Valente is so nervous about this thing it's actually a little hard for me to get him within the frame of where the camera is set up and I'm zigzagging a little bit back and forth kind of like a boomerang pattern almost and my goal for this particular session is to start to work him on sideways towards things that are a little bit nerve wracking for him. And I don't want to let him touch or look at it specifically because we're trying to work past that type of behavior. And you can see in the beginning, I just get a couple little steps and I offer him a reward because I want him to know that this is an opportunity to earn and that he doesn't have to be so bracy and defensive in his body language. And you can see by offering that reward pretty quickly off of just a couple steps of progress, then things already get significantly better in the beginning. He's still looking around. He's still aware. There's a mirror that's directly in front of us that he was really staring into. And sometimes what happens is the horses are so alert and they're so on adrenaline that things that don't typically bother them even tend to catch their attention a little bit. So things can kind of spiral and escalate a little bit. So I find rewarding your horse for those little few steps ahead of time is significantly better than waiting for them to have a big reaction or a big blow up. And it's important to note for Valente, he's at a place in his training where he does sideways really easily and he can do sideways to other objects that maybe aren't as scary for him, like uh, barrels and up to the fence and stuff like that and up to gates. So he is practiced on this maneuver. Now we're just applying it to something that's a little bit of a more stressful situation for him. So you can see I am side passing him up and I'm trying to get to a place where I can move the curtain and stuff a little bit. And then I want to offer him a reward for not moving and not reacting. Notice how when he gets the cookie, he has to bend his head a little bit and he's not really giving in his body there, but already just from taking that one little cookie, his posture relaxed a little bit for a while. Now he's back staring at the mirror and he's on guard again. I move the curtain again. I'm going to offer another reward. And every time he bends like that, he's releasing some of that adrenaline high and he's getting more relaxed. He's chewing, which means that he's starting to uh, not be so tense in his body. And when we encourage those postures of relaxation, it really helps the horses. So I'm trying to find ways to set him up for success and reward him. So that's in contrast to some people that I see that work with horses. They basically try to blow them up. It seems that they, they work them so hard with an obstacle that they kind of like want to overwork them and make them get overwhelmed and have a big freak out attack and this is the total opposite is I want him to see new things and associate it with cookies and positive reinforcement and no reason to get upset you can see he has little moments where he startles like that but it's nothing that's um really dangerous or really bad or really awful it's nothing that can't be managed I just stay calm and patient what I'm asking and when I pick up the little curtain you can see he kind of twinches in his butt a little bit because he's a little bit uncertain and I just reward him for not actually going anywhere and that helps to get him to a place where he can be a little bit more willing rather than totally freaking him out and making him hate what we're doing and offering him lots of rewards along the way. I would love it if when we were in the arena next he was gazing over at this curtain in the corner and thinking, ooh, can we, can we go over to the curtain? I might, get, I might get some cookies over there, rather than looking at it as a corner of fight and flight and anxiety and fear and awfulness. I want him to look at the corner with the curtain and think, that's, that's not a bad place to be. And you can see pretty quickly, like this video's not even five minutes and he's already letting me drape the curtain over top of him and significant progress. Now, this is going to be the slightly easier direction to face purely because it is facing away from the mirror. And so the mirror, he's not 
super scared of the mirror, but he's a little bit wary of the mirror. And so when you start to add things together that the horse is a little bit concerned about, then you end up with a horse that's going to be a little bit more reactive per se. So as we go to walk off, I know he was looking, there's a little balloon that was kind of beside, you can kind of see it. It's that blue shiny thing over there. And he was a little bit not wanting to go over there. So I wanted to just say, hey, like, don't go super far away. And so I just bring him over closer to it and I'm going to offer him a reward. And you can see his little butt twinges. So that kind of lets us know that he's a, he is legitimately worried about it. He's not being a brat or anything. Like, see that little, that little spooky startle? That's him being like, oh, like, I don't, I don't know. That's a little bit worrisome for me. So he's being genuine and he's being authentic and real that this is upsetting for him. So I don't want to combat that with being aggressive or angry or any of those things that are going to just escalate the situation. I want to maintain being a, a person that my horse can trust and, and be with. And so I find I can do a lot of things on the ground. And then if we don't start to have these conversations in the saddle, then his go-to is always going to be, well, could you just get off and help me from the ground? Because that's where our comfort level is. That's where I know I can trust you. And we start on the ground for obvious reasons, being that, you know, he was a wild Mustang not that long ago. And so we start on the ground, but then we want to do this stuff in the saddle because I'd like him to be a super confident riding horse. So we need to start having these same types of things that we would have done on the ground. Now we're doing them in the saddle to prove to him, like, look, the same human that you trusted and loved on the ground is the same human up on your back that can still keep you safe. We can still do these things together and we're going to be okay together. And you can trust me whether I'm on the ground or on your back. And so we need to practice these things both on the ground and in the saddle. But if we always do everything from the ground first, then you can't blame your horse for thinking, well, you should get off and, and solve it from the ground. And so it's not bad if that's what you do with your horse, but if you compete with your horse and you need your horse to be able to ride up to an object and do it confidently the first time, then you're going to need to start solving problems from their back and not be tempted to just get off and do it from the ground all the time. So it would have been very easy for me to start this off on the ground and put the curtain over him and reward him and he'd think it was happy and fine and then ride over and it probably would be significantly better. But then I wouldn't have this opportunity for him to realize that we can also create that same type of confidence and that trust in the saddle. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys as to why I wouldn't want to just get off and do it from the ground first. And he's doing really well. If we look at the time this video has been running, uh, we're still under 10 minutes where he went from not even really wanting to walk over into this little corner to now I'm putting the whole curtain on top of him and stuff like that. And the nice thing is, is that when you train using positive reinforcement and you're very fair and you're consistent and you're patient, all of these qualities in there, then your horse doesn't, uh, there's no reason for them to give you any type of big reaction. There's no reason for him to want to uh, buck me off or rear up or do any of those really nasty things to get rid of me because I'm not doing anything that's really overwhelming for him. I'm asking him to try different things, but I'm respecting that he's scared and I'm respecting his thresholds, asking him to try a little bit more, but being careful and really watching my horse as to how much he can uh, take. So like there he had a little startle, but he didn't move. So I rewarded him and I'm just practicing leaving and coming back and I'm watching his body like that was a much better turnaround. He didn't have any little startles in there. So I'm just reading his body language of what is his comfort level and rewarding him for trusting me along the way. And so what I'm looking for is waiting for him to have a moment where he was nice and relaxed approaching, but also nice and relaxed with the curtain. So I feel like that was great. He did it really well. He turned really nicely. And look, I even pulled a little piece off and it didn't even matter. We hang them up with clothespins so they can be hung up back again. So I hope you guys found that interesting and you guys can let me know what you think of his confidence building. Thanks for watching.